Hello and welcome everyone to the fifth webinar of the Arab Alumni Association 2021 webinar series. My name is Mahmoud Tukhan. I serve as treasurer of the MIT AAA, a volunteer run association that was established to connect MIT to the Arab world and create a space for alumni to collaborate. It is truly an honor to be moderating today's session titled Omnichannel Education, the Future Landscape of higher education, where we will be looking at how MIT is disrupting and reinventing higher education through programs like the MicroMasters. We'll also be learning about the current offerings of the program, the MicroMasters program uh, by MIT, and how these programs are being perceived by industry. The, this webinar is sponsored by Hygiene. And what we hope to achieve through this webinar is to help our listeners realize how education and I mean really good education, is extremely accessible today for those who seek it, of course. Uh, and the MITx courses are just one of them. So a while back, Dr. Eva Ponce, who's also an expert in omnichannel strategies at the MIT Center for Transportation and Logistics, wrote an article about future trends in education and drawing similarities with retail we have all seen how retailers today are offering multiple buying channels or only channels for the convenience of their customers. A similar trend is transforming education with the most visible being uh, the, popularity, the popularity of MOOCs or massive open online courses, as well as programs based on MOOCs. So MIT has been at the forefront of this, transportation, of this transformation with a number of initiatives First, with providing educational materials online through MIT OpenCourseWare, then to co-founding edX alongside Harvard back in 2012, an, ed an education platform currently with over 3,000 MOOCs taught by 15,000 instructors from 160 institutions and reaching 100 million course enrollments um, from over 35 million users. Talk about scale. MIT piloted and launched the first MicroMasters program on the edX platform in supply chain management. The MicroMasters is an online professional and academic credential that aims to advance learners' career or fast track um, a master's degree. We'll be hearing more about these straight from MIT's director of the MicroMasters program. So I believe today's topic is extremely relevant in today's world and not just because of COVID's impact on accelerating digital transformation, but because how much the world is changing and evolving, requiring us to constantly seek knowledge and stay, to stay relevant and adapt uh, and advance in our careers. It feels like becoming a life, a life learner uh, will be a must in the future. The event will last for an hour and will be divided into three parts. So in the first part, we'll be hearing from our speakers followed by some follow-up questions from myself to them. And finally, we'll open the floor for questions uh, for Q&A. To participate in the Q&A, uh, please type your questions in the Q&A tab below, um, and there will be no voice participation. So joining us are three exceptional speakers. Uh, Dr. Eva Ponce is the Executive Director of the, MicroMaster, of the MITx MicroMasters Program in Supply Chain Management. I was also privileged to be one of her, uh, to be taught by her. Um, Tracy Tan, the director of the MicroMasters program. Dan Covert, director of supply chain R&D for, for uh, Al Dalhaiz USA Supply Chain Services and an MIT alum of class of 2018. Also a, uh, a friend and a, fellow and a fellow classmate. Thank you all for being here today. Dr. Eva, uh, let's start it off with you. Um, can you please introduce yourself the, uh, and the, the journey of, uh, or highlight what Omnichannel is? Excellent. Omnichannel. Thank you, Mamun, for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be part of this panel today. As Mamun said, Eva Ponce, I'm the executive director of the MITx, the MicroMasters program in supply chain management. 
and a research scientist at MIT, the Center for Transportation and Logistics. Um, I'm leading different uh, research initiatives in omnichannel distribution strategies, also now in omnichannel education. That's why I'm very excited to be here today about that, to talk about that um, in circular supply chains. So um, I will start setting the stage of what is omnichannel education, and then I will also share our experience launching the first MicroMasters in supply chain management. So let me share my screen um, with that. Perfect. So what is omnichannel education? So to start uh, with this, I really want to take the student's perspective. So if we, if we think in the traditional way to educate students, especially in the higher education space, typically students apply to be admitted in a college or university and comes to this institution in order to receive the, their degrees in order to learn from the instructors, from the faculties in the institutions. However, online learning and online education has been revolutionizing the education landscape. And currently, thanks to online platforms and thanks to online programs, the institutions can come to the, to the students and students can receive this higher top level, high quality education almost from anywhere. They can receive this education from home. They can receive this education from while they are at work, while they are at the park, on the street, wherever. And this is thanks to the online learning, thanks to the online platforms, and thanks to the mobile device, the devices that is allowing students to learn from many different ways and different formats. And I want to make here the analogy with the retailer, uh, the retail uh, industry and the consumer goods industry, because uh, customers are also facing now the same experience, uh, thanks to the growth of e commerce, thanks to the use of mobile devices, uh, customers can uh, buy from many different places. We can buy from home, from work, from the street, wherever we are. And retailers are facing now the challenge to offer many different formats and buying channels to their customers. So I want to make this analogy because now institutions like MIT and many other institutions are facing now this challenge of offering multiple formats to educate their students. And this is what they want to represent here, these multiple channels. Our learners can learn now using their tablets, using their laptops, using their mobile phones. So many different formats, many different devices, and many different channels to deliver uh, education to our learners. So as institutions, as instructors, this is a challenge. And the challenge we are facing now is which is the best format to deliver certain contents? Which is the best format to develop certain skills for our professionals in the world? And which is the best way to offer these uh, new channels that learners are also demanding in the education landscape? So this is uh, how we understand and how we define omnichannel education, this combination of multiple formats and the challenge of deciding the best content for the right format, how to build skills and how to educate the world using this technology and the combination of these different formats. At MIT, the Center for Transportation and Logistics, we started in 2014 offering the first massive open online course in supply chain management. And in 2015, we announced for the very first time, President Rave made the announcement of the very first MicroMaster, not only at MIT, also in the world. This was the MicroMasters in Supply Chain Management. Since then, we have been seeing a growing community of supply chain learners joining the program. Currently, we have more than 400,000 learners enrolled in any of our supply chain courses. We just awarded the eighth cohort of MicroMaster credential holders. We have um, um, about 3,000 credential holders now as part of the community. Um, this is truly a global program. 
This is a program that we have learners from more than 190 different countries. And we are also uh, very lucky to have more than 180 community teaching assistants helping us to run this program from uh, every part of the world. The program has received different recognition from MIT to advanced online learning, also from QS in order uh, they was nominated as the best distributed program to nurturing 21st skills uh, and professionals. So we have been at CTL working since then in offering different educational programs to our learners. So MicroMasters is 100% online. It's an a synchronous program is a flexible, accessible program that our learners can build their skills enrolling in any of our supply chain courses. All of them are massive open online courses. They can learn from these courses at the, their own pace. Is flexible. They can review the, the videos at any time, at work, at night, during the weekends. So it's really, really flexible and accessible. In, we have been also working in offering blended offer. This means that the very first part, the MicroMaster, as I mentioned, is a 100% online, asynchronous, flexible, your own pace program typically takes in between 12 to 18 months. But after completing that, we are offering also the opportunity to apply to MIT to complete a master's degree on ground, to be on campus for one full semester and complete this blended option that combines online asynchronous education with on ground, in person edu education. In addition to the MIT opportunity, there are more than 20 pathways uh, universities offering this blended opportunity to uh, our learners. We are also offering these hybrid formats in, let's say, we call these small pills. We, uh, our learners can also enroll in just one course, one supply chain fundamental course or supply chain design course, and then come on campus or virtually attend to a live online experience. This is just four intense days to be exposed to the cutting edge technology, to the uh, faculties at MIT, researchers, and be again combining the two things, the online asynchronous education that MicroMaster or MOOCs offer with some live interaction. This live interaction can happen on ground, on campus, or can be also virtual and have live events that allow us to have live discussion. So this is what we are working now in this uh, portfolio of hybrid models, the combination of the different channels in order to try to take the best of the both worlds, the be best of the uh, a synchronous, flexible, accessible a way to deliver content with the beautiful thing of having people discussing real time, online, on ground, and developing certain skills. So our vision for the future is to educate and upskill supply chain professionals to be competitive in a changing and very dynamic world. We truly believe in flexible, accessible education models. And I truly see the future as an omni-channel education models. I truly really see this future combining, as I mentioned, the best of both worlds and trying to provide flexible, accessible, and high quality also content education models to, to the learners and to the professionals. So this is all from my side, my mom. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Dr. Eva. This was uh, great. Um, let's move on to Ms. Tracy. Uh, can you tell us more about the, the MicroMasters program offered by MIT? Sounds good. Thank you. And hi, everyone. It's really nice uh, to be here today and uh, to share our MicroMasters program with all of you. Uh, so my name is Tracy Tan. I'm the director of the MicroMasters program. Uh, I'm based at MIT Open Learning. Uh, now let me share my screen. Great. Well, first, let me uh, walk you through briefly uh, what the MicroMasters is. I think uh, Mamon had mentioned briefly, um, but just let me uh, repeat it a little bit. So a MicroMasters at MIT 
is a set of MIT graduate level courses and they're offered entirely online. And the MicroMasters program leads to mastery of content and skills. Upon successful completion, learners would make defined professional progress or career advancement and upon admission to a master's program, either at MIT or at our pathway school, they can accelerate their graduate study by receiving credits for the MicroMasters credential. So to enroll in the MicroMasters program, there's no admissions required. Anyone from anywhere can enroll and give a try. And once you finish a course, pass a course, and you will earn a course certificate, and once you pass all the courses within a program and the associate assessments, you earn a program credential. Our MicroMasters program credential leads to a set of unique benefits and you can learn more about these benefits from this web link. And currently, MIT is offering five MicroMasters topics. Besides the one that Eva just mentioned, supply chain management, we are also having uh, topics in economics, manufacturing, data science, and finance. And each of these MicroMasters topic will lead to a corresponding master's program at MIT. So the supply chain management MicroMasters leads to a blended master's in supply chain management. And the, the econ MicroMasters leads to a master's in development economics. The manufacturing MicroMasters leads to a master's of engineering in advanced manufacturing. And the data science MicroMasters leads to a PhD program at MIT. And then the finance MicroMasters leads to a master's of finance. And so here I give you a, a screenshot of the courses and prices of the programs. Um, so you can feel free to take a screenshot um, as I'm not, I'm not going to uh, uh, walk you through the, all the details. And you can also find the same information and even more details from this web link on the left-hand side. Our MicroMasters programs have, have made a great global impact. Uh, over a million unique learners have enrolled from all over the world. And MIT has awarded over 70,000 course certificates. Over 4,000 program, uh, 4,000 learners have earned a program credential. And among these 4,000 people, over 170 learners have been admitted by MIT and have graduated from MIT with a master's degree. Besides the, micro, uh, the uh, MIT internal uh, masters I just mentioned, there are additional 45 universities in 30 countries are providing credits to our MicroMasters credential towards their master's program. So you can accelerate your graduate study there. And you can find out these 45 universities and their credit offerings from this web link. Our MicroMasters content has also become an integral part of a professional development at 15 plus global organizations, meaning that these 15 plus companies are using our MicroMasters content to train their workforce. And as an organization, we support learners from anywhere in the world to enroll into our program. And we also support universities to train their students by blending our content with their curriculum. And we are also supporting companies to upskill their workforce by bulk enrolling their employees into our program. So I listed this um, web link here where you can find out our specific support to universities and organizations. And if you have your company have employees uh, to bulk enroll and please feel free to contact us um, by using this email on the slides. So uh, I know this is really brief and uh, I'm going to pause here and I look forward to hearing your questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Um, let's move on to Dan. Uh, as an alumnus of the MicroMasters and the SEM blended program, can you give us some insights and maybe how is industry perceiving um, the MM, the MicroMasters uh, credential as a standalone today. Sure. Thanks, Ben Moon, and, and thanks for inviting me. Definitely uh, appreciate it. Nice to see everybody today. 
So let me, let me start maybe, I'll give a little bit of background on, on what I'm doing now and then talk a little bit. I didn't, I didn't prepare any slides, so I hope I don't talk too fast, but I'll, uh, I'll try to keep this, you know, pretty high level and then we can go into specifics later. But so right now, um, my name is Dan, as Mamu mentioned, uh, I live in Portland, Maine, Northeast of the U S uh, I work for Aval Delays, uh, which is a big global food retailer and I lead R and D and innovation for supply chain in the U S which is a, very exciting, fun job. We work on you know, sort of data science and analytics projects in uh, supply chain and, and robotics are sort of the, the focuses of my team right now. Um, but sort of, I, th I think to, to kind of go back to the MicroMasters and, and you know, how I got here, I don't think when I was, you know, eight years old, I grew up thinking I would be a R&D director for a big grocery store um, and have a career in supply chain management. It's not really like one of those jobs that people think about growing up, but there's a lot of people in this space and i think you know my undergraduate training was in physics and in math which is not too different but than supply chain management but it's not supply chain management so i found myself you know after graduating from my undergrad in a supply chain role because it was a great application of what i had studied in undergrad and i imagine there are a lot of people in similar positions that you know, have, have done other things and then find themselves in a role that's supply chain management focused without necessarily a formal background in that area. So, you know, in, in 2014, I found myself in this role and was wondering what, what I could do to get better at my position. So I, I found myself working for uh, delays at the time, this was prior to our merger, um, leading a, a group of forecast analysts. And I knew sort of how our, our company did business, but I really didn't know what, what did good look like. You know, what are, what's some theory behind the work that I'm actually doing every day? And at that point in my life, I was considering going back to graduate school, um, didn't really know what the right path was. And through sort of happenstance, found the MicroMasters, and this was just as it was getting launched. And what I found most important about that program was that, you know, thinking about going to graduate school, you can spend a lot of time studying for the GMATs. And that sort of seemed like a waste to me at that time, because that knowledge isn't very useful. It's just a good sort of stamp of approval, but doing the MicroMasters, if I, if it didn't work out at the end of the day that I didn't get to go to MIT and do the blended program, it was still incredibly useful for what I was doing. So I found myself in the first course, which was supply chain fundamentals. Um, I think the first lecture is about something to do with demand planning. And that was exactly what I was doing at the time. So it was so applicable to what I needed in my career then. I was in a role, I was leading a team, but I didn't really know much beyond what my day-to-day -day work was. So being able to apply these concepts from the MicroMasters courses, I could immediately put it into what I was doing. So I was thinking about forecasting differently, thinking about how we were designing our network, all at the same time while I was doing my job, which was so beneficial. Um, it was a lot of work and I you know my moon was going through sort of the same thing at a similar time. You know, to do this while working full time is a lot, but it's not impossible. A lot of people do it. And it was it's also very motivating because each week we would learn a new topic that I could then apply to what I was doing. You know, is the sort of comparison is studying for a GRE or a standardized exam. You know, each week you're learning something that you're going to forget in a year because it's sort of irrelevant to what you're actually doing in your job. but. Everything in the MicroMasters, I could immediately apply, which is a really nice thing because it really cements your knowledge. You're not only, you know, learning concepts and doing problem sets, but then you're applying it in a real world setting, which I thought was just a fantastic way to, to continue to learn. So I found myself going through that program. I think the MicroMasters were sort of getting stood up and sort of the road was being paved as, you know, I think that was on the road at the same time. The road was being paved as we were, as we were on it. And then found the opportunity to go do the blended masters at MIT, which I found to be, you know, an excellent sort of capstone to the MicroMasters. So the MicroMasters in and of itself is an excellent way to provide continued education to people that are, are working, um, that they can apply to what they're doing. It's also a great bridge to the, the blended masters program, which I sort of view as a, a capstone um, to the whole experience, because there's a lot of topics that are sort of best taught online through a MOOC. Like I think, you know, a lot of the things like network design and some of the technical components of supply chain management are actually better taught through a MOOC than in a lecture hall. And then when we, when I got the opportunity to go to MIT in 2018, 
it was much more strategic discussions where actually having a spirited debate with your colleagues really enhances your knowledge. So I really enjoyed the way that the program was split up where I could learn all the sort of data driven components of uh, supply chain management while taking the MicroMasters. And then I could Im immediately sort of learn the more soft components, strategic components while I went and did the blended program. So sort of overall, I, th I would absolutely recommend this as an opportunity for anyone. I think as I'm looking at you know hiring people in the future, the, the MicroMasters credential is certainly very important and stands out on a resume that someone that's you know been able to continue their education while working is you know a lot of people are doing it in, in that phase and i know what the content is and i know how useful it is in their day-to-day -day jobs so certainly view that very highly and, and really value this experience i think as, as i reflect on my career this was one of the best pivot points that i've i've done because it allowed me to first learn a bunch meet a bunch of great people like Mamoon and and dr eva and you know continue to build out this network which is another sort of soft benefit of the MicroMasters and the program is not only do you learn a bunch, you get to have a great experience, but you also meet people from all over the world that are still connections that you can chat with about problems that you're facing in your business. So it's, it's been an incredible experience and you know, happy to continue to be involved with this program and, and really looking forward to you know, discussing more on where this is going in the future. Yeah, thanks Dan. Um, I think you've described it perfectly, you know, where we've been like myself doing the program as well, and then into the, the blended uh, master's program. Um, I guess we can, I'll, I'll, so I'll open up the floor now for discussion between us, and then um, when we move on to the audience Q&A. Uh, so my first question is, uh, Dr. Eva, how how did how was the let's say when we first started it started off as the X series and then um, changed into the MicroMasters and then the blended program was announced was this the plan all along or or was this a result of what has happened from uh, you know the, the MOOCs that were offered. This is a great question, Mamou. Um, yes, let me share with you the story of that, because um, Chris Kaplis, that is the main instructor, started in 2014 offering the first MOOC. This was Supply Chain Fundamentals. And was just Chris and a half TA helping him to put this together. We had 40,000 learners enrolled in that course. And we were really surprised about that. So when we started with this first experience with one course, we say, okay, so then let's try to design a series of three courses. And then we design supply chain fundamentals, supply chain design, and supply chain dynamics, just to close that. And we were happy with that. And then President Rafe called Josie Sheffy, Professor Sheffy, and Chris Kaplis in 2015 and said, hey, MIT is thinking about the first MicroMaster ever, and we want you to pioneer that. But a MicroMaster needs to be the first part for a master degree, and this means that needs to have at least five courses. So then we already have these three courses courses and then we design and think about how to expand that. That's why we expand with supply chain analytics at the beginning, but was not intentional to call it SE0X, was by design and because we design in that way. And then we added also supply chain technology because of the importance of managing the flows, the information flows, the data and big data machine learning techniques. So finally, we, we invest a lot of time in designing, creating and launching that, connect it all of the dots and trying to make it a, it's a fundamental program. It's covered the foundations and the basic concepts, but definitely is comprehensive and trying to cover all of the main relevant aspects in supply chain. But this was part of the origin. So yes, we started with three courses. We expanded into five and finally we come up with this MicroMasters program. <laughs> and I guess it was a success that MIT decided to spin off more courses. So. Right, Tracy. Um, what was your expectations coming in and what's your expectations now, let's say, for the future of, of the MicroMasters program? Right. Um, so I, I just answered the questions through the Q&A uh, chat. Uh, so, uh, yes, I actually joined a little bit after uh, the supply chain MicroMasters was launched. So I wasn't there to witness 
the, the, the creation of our very first. Um, but I joined shortly after. Uh, so since then, we developed the four more topics. Um, and uh, as for the future, I think this is a very, um, um, how to say, aspiring, inspiring experience for um, both MIT faculty and leadership. So um, we have seen a growing, um, you know, interest in creating more topics. And we're right now in the planning uh, phase, you know, due to the, the disruptive, the disruption of pandemic, uh, we were not able to launch any new MicroMasters. Uh, except for our finance micromaster, which was planned before the pandemic. But uh, I think in the near future, um, the uh, learners in the world should be able to see a few more topics coming from MIT. So since you brought up the pandemic, have you seen an uptick in people taking courses? Yeah, I think both Ivan and I can share this. So we've seen a growing number of, of, of learners of higher completion rate, more engagement uh, in our program. And I think our MicroMasters program has really stood out uh, during the pandemic because people now have the time to uh, differentiate and to search for more valuable, affordable, you know, flexible, the combination of, of you know, this kind of high value content and they were able to identify micromasters the, like the best match of their for their needs. Yes, we compare the data from during the pandemic, the course we were running during the pandemic with the three previous courses in order to see the, the relevant statistics. And we observe uh, not only an increase in the enroll uh, number of registrants, but more importantly, the increased number of verified learners, those learners that are committed to complete the program. The completion rate, as Tracy mentioned, also increased and engagement. I can <laughs> tell you that my Team has been receiving the highest number of emails during the pandemic because I think the students were really, really committed during that time and brought those questions that we have never seen before because the level of uh, detail they were through all of the material during the pandemic was really, really high. So very committed learners, um, higher completion rate um, and engagement uh, through the program during the pandemic. Yeah. And, and just a follow up question on that. So on campus for the master's program in, in, in supply chain management, were you, do you feel as a, as a program, were you more ready for the pandemic? Like you can ship you know, some courses online? Um, in our case, definitely the experience we had at CTL running the online program helps a lot to be able in just two weeks, because I think we move into the to move the entire in person on ground program to be 100% online, live and synchronous. I want to make the differentiation because it's not the same to provide asynchronous material videos than a synchronous live online interaction, but definitely the team worked really hard in just two, three weeks to be ready to deliver all of our uh, in-person uh, content to be online synchronous live. We did a tremendous effort because to be honest, the content is exactly the same, but the format matters. Um, I was teaching the same class in person and online during the pandemic because we have a, a reduced group of learners that were allowed to be in class, some people that were online, and I need to prepare two completely different classes. Same content, but the format is completely different. For in person, you need to highlight this in person interaction and have this discussion. People raise their hand and, and you have this, you use the blackboard. For online, I need to schedule more breaks and make it much more dynamic because during 90 minutes it's impossible to have people with fully attention through the screen so a lot of breaks a lot of breakout rooms dynamics so the same class took kind of uh, two times more to prepare to deliver online in a very dynamic interactive way so we did a tremendous effort to do that but definitely our experience providing the micromaster help us a lot to be ready to do that in just two three weeks um, and Dan, I think you, you've touched on this, but you know, as a person in the industry now who's hiring, um, how do you view, let's say, the MicroMasters in comparison with other certifications? Let's talk about that, and specifically like supply chain management. 
Yeah, I think, you know, I, I know people that have done, you know, specifically CSCMP or, or other certifications that are, that are similar. You know, personally, I view the MicroMaster as pretty high because I know what it takes because I've been through it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know sort of the engagement and the amount of time that you have to commit to just, just the fact that people are able to, to complete this while working full time, you know, shows some expert time management skills and some determination because it, it's hard, you know, I've, I've made it through, but sometimes barely. So I, I certainly view it as a very, you know, it stands out on a resume. People have been able to complete the MicroMasters and I, I know the content as well. So I know sort of it, it covers end to end from you know, software installation to demand planning to logistics and route optimization and all of these different topics. So I know that it's it's great content, um, and I know that anybody that has that certificate and has that credential is going to be you know, a valuable asset to to any company. So I certainly view it view it really highly. Um, I'm I'm sort of biased, obviously, because I I went through the program, so I know what the material is. You know, I think the MIT name goes a long way, and any credential from MIT is going to be viewed very highly. So I'd certainly say it's an asset to anybody considering. Completing the credential, it does make a difference on a resume, and you know, I would certainly be more inclined to hire somebody with the credential than without. I can't speak specifically because I haven't done CSCMP to know really how a MicroMasters credential differentiates between a credential like that. Um, but you know, I, I know, like I said, I know that the content is there, and I know the engagement that it takes to complete it. So it's, it's viewed very highly. And. Tracy or Dr. Eva, can we maybe highlight how evaluations are done or assessments um, in these courses? Like, is it, um, you know, like a regular um, certification exam? Do you go somewhere to take the examination or, you know, it, obviously it's online? Um, yes, through the MicroMaster, we are doing exams, homeworks. They, they have weekly homeworks that they need to complete every week. Then in our courses, we are offering a meter and final exam. These are time exams that are uh, with a limited uh, duration and learners need to, to take that in order to assess their, their knowledge. And at the end of the program, we are providing a comprehensive final and proctor exam just to evaluate the entire um, concepts for the for the entire program and it's a proctor exam every single thing happens every single thing is happening now online the very first time we did we did a combination of in-person exams with online but after doing that for a global program like the MicroMaster is with more than 190 countries represented definitely we move into the 100% online assessment mode and now we have proctoring companies and software that help us to proctor learners, uh, even though they are remotely uh, taking from their home. Uh, yeah, so absolutely what Eva just said, uh, for across all of our MicroMasters programs, the weekly homework quizzes, midterm, final is very pretty standard. The only difference is uh, out of our five MicroMasters programs, Eva's program and the data science MicroMasters both have a comprehensive proctored exam at the end of the, all the courses, when you finish all the courses, and that's proctored. And for the rest of the three, uh, three programs, the proctored exam is at the end of each course. So you will have a five or five or more proctored, a small proctored exams versus a comprehensive proctored exam for EVA's program and the data science program. Yeah. Thanks. And um, is there any specific age groups or um, regions uh, that, that you see more participations of? So who, who, who's the ideal candidate for a MicroMasters? And then maybe an, uh, the ideal candidate for a person coming in for the blended program. Uh, so the ideal candidate for the MicroMaster is to be truly anyone from anywhere. The mission of this program is to democratize knowledge. You know, you cannot imagine how happy we are when we, in, in the five years I have been running this program, we have two high schoolers graduating and, and finishing our MicroMaster. And we were so proud of them. We have the the oldest person i think was close to the 80s um we were very proud of him too so 
is a variety of ages and different backgrounds. In terms of countries, uh, USA is one of the top represented countries. The second one is India, in our case, in our program, India. Then the third country used to be Mexico, Brazil, Canada. These are countries that are very well represented. But having said that, we have China is coming, uh, growing up to, we have countries from, all of 190 countries. However, the top represented as are the ones I, I mentioned. In terms of age, the average or mean age is around 30, in between 20 to 35 is where we have the highest number of learners. But I said the range goes from 16 years old to almost 90 years old. For the blended, the blended is also an opportunity to open MIT to anyone from anywhere. Of course, you need admission and you need to get admission. Um, the uh, MIT committee is looking at many different things. Is looking at their performance through the MicroMaster and this is one of the top things, but they are also looking at their essay or their uh, master thesis capstone proposal, their recommendation letters, their interest. And we're looking for diversity, for a, for a representation of what these um, programs that are intended to open learning to anyone are uh, designed for. And just to add on top of Eva, what Eva just said, the beauty of the MicroMasters is, is really like two parts. One is to attract, you know, uh, talents like Dan, who um, leverage uh, MicroMasters content for his, career, for his career development and to also get a master's degree from MIT. And we also really stimulate this movement of lifelong learning, as Eva said, you know, we've seen the youngest being in teen teenagers and the oldest, you know, after retirement. And so really it's not just to learn for career advancement or masters, it's learn for fun as well. So um, the, yeah, that's the beauty of the MicroMaster. And for the blended masters, as Eva said, there is an admissions. Uh, um, and there's a, one thing I want to mention is like our uh, development economics blended masters, uh, the, the, the lead faculty has waived um, many uh, traditional admission criteria, like a GRE, GMAT is waived, and also your bachelor's degree is also waived. If you never were able to get a bachelor's degree, you can still apply to a master's in the development economics field. And we have admitted students uh, in, uh, in that back with that background. Yeah. Oh. Um, I think another uh piece of relevance to these programs today are uh, with how people are living healthier lives, you know, leading to longer life expectancies. So we'll eventually maybe see more uh, people at the older age, like after retirement, uh, taking taking on these, these programs, right? So you retire, um, you still have like maybe 20 years in, in retirement where you can come, uh, you know, take one of these programs and maybe go to campus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, and you know, these people are bringing their experience. These are people with a strong professional experience, and they are bringing this experience to the discussion forums. They are bringing this experience to the program too. We also have a high-level um, professionals. We have some VPs taking our, our program too, and they are bringing their experience to the program. They are enjoying because they really want to up a skill and to learn some new machine learning techniques to deal with big data. So we also have this profile and definitely they are uh, bringing this um, their experience to the program too. So it's a win-win. Uh, okay, so I think we can uh, open up the, the, the floor for questions from the audience. So I've received uh, a few. Uh, so this is for Tracy and Dr. Eva. What formats of what format what new formats of engagement of engaging with content do you envision could be implemented in omnichannel education to help deliver the content more effectively? For example, virtual or, or augmented reality. 
Oh, that's a great question. I definitely envision the future with a combination of formats, as I mentioned, because asynchronous education like the MicroMaster is very convenient. It's very flexible, affordable, uh, um, accessible. So this is really convenient in order to prepare in advance materials. I also see the benefit of the live interaction. Can be online, can be on ground, but this live interaction can build certain skills and can also go further into the discussion because the 100% asynchronous online is, is, uh, is great, but it's more kind of discussing black and white things, not grace, and um, it depends, <laughs> discussions. So for the in-person, definitely, I see the opportunity to take advantage of more in-depth discussion, build skills that sometimes is tough to build uh, just online. So definitely the combination of multiple formats and taking the best of both worlds. That's why I started the, the presentation saying that um, we need to, as instructors, to design the best format for the best content and um, decide, hey, this content is better to deliver in this way, this other content is better to deliver in a different way. So definitely I envision with the combination of different formats to provide this uh, flexibility to, to learners and try to take the best of, of both worlds because there are benefits in, in both ways to deliver education. Yeah, just quickly to add that with the growing technology, you know, in the education, uh, in the online education um, platform, uh, we will not be surprised you know, we can leverage a new learning mode, teaching mode um, uh, to, you know, innovate our content um, as well. Yeah, we can take the analogy with the retailers. They are using augmented reality to improve their online customer experience. So probably the way to go in the future is also to include some augmented reality to improve our online delivery of education models. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's a, a question. I think then you'll be best to answer that. Given the format of the, uh, given the, format of the MicroMasters program, what did you do to, in, in your approach that you felt enabled you to really benefit from the program? And what did you do and what do you feel you could have done differently? Sure. Um, so let's see. So during the, the format of the, the MicroMasters program, you know, I, I think I made this point earlier around trying to apply you know, everything that I was learning to my job. So that was certainly important. Um, what, you, what you find often is there's a little bit of a gap of, of translating formal education to actual business practice. You know, I think any of us that have done a, a network design study in sort of SC2X know that that's never reality. You know, we're, we have a transshipment location, we've got four trucks going in and we have four DCs on the other side. And, you know, the, the volumes and sort of the, the certainty in solving some of these problems is never the actual way that they're solved in business and the data is never available um, to that extent. So I think I think my approach was, you know, always trying to contextualize what was going on in, in the courses and try to apply what I was learning to, you know, if it wasn't part of my job, it was, you know, talking to somebody in my business that did that. So at the time I was working in demand management. So the forecasting, the inventory strategy components, those were really relevant. And I was able to contextualize that in my day-to-day -day job. But things like network design, I, I wasn't doing that. So I sort of made a point during the MicroMasters to try to educate myself on it, especially on topics like that, where I was learning the academic perspective, but didn't actually have the, couldn't contextualize it in my business. I made a point to try to meet with people that worked in that space so that I could contextualize it a little bit better. I think sort of that's it's one approach that I took and it's also something that I wish I had done a little bit better because I find that really with with any sort of continued education, um, you know, there's so many offers out there on edX and, and other platforms to be able to actually get the most value out of it. You can't just, you know, sort of take the course and then you just know it. You have to be able to apply it. I mean, I've tried to get good at coding in Python for three years since I finished the MicroMasters and or since I finished at MIT and I never have to do any coding in Python. So it's pretty hard to retain that knowledge. Um, so I think that, that that's sort of the big takeaway is if, if you want the education to make a difference here, 
then whatever you're learning, you have to figure out how you can connect it to something that you're doing. Because I think that that day-to-day -day repetition and that way to apply it to real business problems is what actually makes you have a command of a topic, not just you know solving a couple problem sets. But if I can you know learn how to do a mixed integer linear program, which is you know, a big topic in SC2X that I think many people spend a lot of you know sleepless nights trying to get their models to work. You know, that's a big topic, but in being able to then apply that to you know, smaller problems in the business, it's not just network study, but you can use that technique to solve a bunch of different things. So I, I think that, that that ability to contextualize problems and apply it to your day-to-day -day business is what, you know, is that, that's the advice that I would give anyone going through the program now. Uh, a question for Tracy. What are the next areas of study that you foresee being developed in the MicroMasters curricula? Um, I, I, well, I think, uh, you know, the world can just guess, you know, I mean, there's um, just certain topics, uh, STEM topics and uh, at MIT that are so popular. Um, so we are looking into uh, what kind of areas uh, is possible to uh, move forward with a MicroMasters topic. There are certainly internal requirements in order for us to develop MicroMasters because we want to make sure uh, first there's an internal credit pathway at MIT. So um, like, for example, we really want to develop a, a entrepreneurship MicroMasters in the past, but unfortunately there's no masters in entrepreneur um, at MIT, so unfortunately, we cannot develop a MicroMaster. So MIT take this very seriously, and they really want to make sure the content is rigorous enough, is real graduate level content. So we need to have a, a corresponding masters on campus. And so we are figuring out some of the these requirements and to see what the best topic we can provide to the world, and also to represent the best of MIT. Um, so you can imagine uh, within this STEM topics that um, you know, unfortunately, I can't really disclose because I don't, I don't, I don't really have the, the final answer yet. Okay. Um, so here's one. Uh, I think we can use it as a, as a closure. Um, how can people in the Arab world um, make the most benefit from participating in the MicroMasters? You know, since the audience is global, are there some case studies presented relatable to a global audience? I guess like, um, how can new regions basically make use of such programs? So I would say the, the program we are delivering, we take into consideration the different cultures. It's a global program. So they will find examples from many different countries and we try to provide that. In terms of take advantage of the region and the local region, we encourage students to organize study groups so in our program, there are some uh, study groups that uh, spontaneously our learners initiate in Argentina, in Peru, in, in Egypt, Egypt, in many different countries. So study groups for collaborating in learning, uh, never collaborating assessment, but collaboration in learning is something that we definitely encourage. Um, our students spontaneously has been leading study groups in different areas. So this is something that definitely can complement to that and then the program is designed taking into consideration it's a global program so we try our best to make it kind of illustrate uh, examples from different countries yeah one one thing i'd add to that in addition to the, the study groups is where you can take this go through the experience with colleagues you know try to find a study group with your own business you know if you have colleagues that are interested in this doing it together is can be really helpful just to have somebody, because that, that is a, a bit one of the drawbacks of online education is that it, it's hard to facilitate that actual in-person discussion that you get when you're, you, you are in person. I think MIT has done a great job of this through all the forums and all the discussions there. It's not a one-to-one -one replacement. I think we all realize that. So being able to take find a few colleagues that are willing to go through the problems with you, not go through obviously the assignments, of course, you never do that, but they, they can go through the lectures each week and having somebody to just discuss the topics with. And again, MIT has done a great job of making sort of discussions and breakouts and all of these things, you know, that are sort of innovations in, in digital learning 
they've done a great job with that. But having somebody that sits near you in the office that you can go chat with about you know, how are you thinking about the content this week can be really helpful. So I have a few colleagues and I know that even you know, there's there's some programming that maybe Ava talked about earlier around you know bringing several people from a company to do the program at the same time. I, I think we did that and I thought it was very valuable to have a few colleagues to chat with. Yeah, uh, totally. I see uh, big value you know, when, when you're studying with someone else, uh, for sure. So as we're hitting the one hour mark, um, is there any final remarks from uh, speakers? Just wanted to encourage anyone uh, from anywhere to join our program to learn more about uh, supply chain management. Um, yes, we, we are very always happy to receive new learners um, um, grow the program. Thank you so much for the invitation. It was a pleasure to be here today. Yeah, yeah same here. Yeah, same here. Just, uh, you know, uh, just want to repeat, there is no admissions required for the MicroMasters. Anyone from anywhere can give a try. There is some prerequisite in terms of knowledge, um, uh, like math skills, but uh, you, can, you, can, you can find out all this requirement on our website, but there's no admissions, no GRE or anything required for you to enroll into a MicroMaster. Just give a try. Yeah, I just reiterate, I think this was the best career decision I've ever made. Lowest barrier to entry, biggest payback of, of anything I've done in my career. So would highly encourage people to, to seek out the opportunity. And, you know, if people are listening and want to connect on LinkedIn or chat further about this, I'm certainly open to the discussion. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. So I'd like to conclude this, uh, conclude this session by thanking our speakers. Um, on behalf of my colleagues at the... Uh, MIT AAA. I'd like to thank this event sponsor as well, Hygiene. Uh, we would also like to thank the MIT Alumni Association for their continuous support on hosting these webinars. Um, thank you, Arthur Grau from the MIT Center for Transportation Logistics for helping us out put this together. And finally, thank you to our listeners uh, for joining us today. Um, for more information, you can visit micromasters.mit.edu. Um, and then uh, for the SEM program, there's uh, ctl.mit.edu. Uh, our next webinar will be on the 29th of June, titled Investing in Startups and SMEs in the Middle East, Insights from an Evolving Ecosystem. Uh, the webinar will be moderated by my fellow board member, Salman Bukhel. Registrations are now open. Um, thanks again, and keep an eye out for other announcements and events. Stay safe, everyone, and goodbye.